Of course, we begin here with our big story, the House voting on whether to formalize the impeachment inquiry against President Biden as Republicans investigate the business dealings of his family, particularly his son, Hunter Biden. Now, that vote is expected to take place shortly here. We'll be keeping an eye on that and watching uh, the House floor. GOP members say they hope to formalize this inquiry, and by doing that, it will give them more authority in any potential legal disputes stemming from subpoenas and other efforts to gather potential evidence. But just today, Hunter Biden defied that subpoena requesting uh, that he provide a deposition to House investigators behind closed doors. Instead, the president's son speaking outside the Capitol, offering to testify in a public hearing and blasting what he called MAGA Republicans. For six years, I have been the target of the unrelenting Trump attack machine shouting, where's Hunter? Well, here's my answer. I am here. My father was not financially involved in my business, not as a practicing lawyer, not as a board member of Burisma, not in my partnership with a Chinese private businessman, not in my investments at home nor abroad, and certainly not as an artist. Well, Republicans hanging on to that phrase that he used, financially involved. I want to show you now the response from House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan speaking earlier on the House floor. Today, Hunter Biden did a press conference. He was supposed to be in a deposition. He did a press conference. And at that press conference, he said, my father was not financially involved in the business. Well, that's an important qualifier. We haven't heard that at all. We've heard is Joe Biden had no involvement. Now his son does a press conference when he's supposed to be being deposed and says he wasn't financially involved. Well, House Republicans say that they now plan to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress, and some have previously admitted that they have no evidence of wrongdoing on the president's behalf, and the Biden administration has called today's vote a, quote, baseless stunt not rooted in facts or reality. So joining me right now from Capitol Hill is ABC News contributing political correspondent and co-author of the Politico Playbook newsletter, Rachel Bade. Rachel, thank you so much for being here with us as always. We appreciate you. And so let's start with this. Republicans, of course, they plan to hold Hunter Biden uh, in contempt of Congress. But what are the steps that they have to take to actually accomplish that? And how will the Biden administration respond? Hey there, Kena. Yeah, I think it's a matter of time. It sounds like, at least from my Republican sources, that they're going to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress. And the question of exactly what kind of contempt of Congress they're going to go for. This is going to go through the Judiciary Committee and then eventually come to the full House floor for a vote. Basically, Republicans have to make a decision about whether they want to do this as a civil proceeding or as a criminal proceeding. On the one hand, they can do a criminal contempt of Congress, and that is where they basically go to the Justice Department and say, look, Hunter Biden ignored a duly authorized subpoena that is illegal. We want you to prosecute him. Democrats did something similar in the January 6th committee for Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, uh, two Trump allies, and the DOJ ended up taking them to court and actually winning uh, when they defied subpoenas, uh, sending uh, them to jail. That is something that Republicans privately are telling me they think is unlikely because obviously the Justice Department is currently run by Biden allies, which makes it unlikely that they're going to actually prosecute uh, the president's son for something like this. Uh, now, on the other hand, they can actually do a civil contempt of Congress charge, which means that Republicans will go to a court and ask a federal judge to rule that Hunter Biden has to show up and actually talk and answer questions. So that actually takes a long time. So neither of these are particularly easy uh, solutions for Republicans at this time. And Rachel, you know, Hunter Biden again saying that he wants to testify publicly, but Republicans say they want to know specific questions privately first, and then they'll hold public testimony. They add that they will release the transcripts, but Rachel, Democrats, some of them saying today the transcripts are not always released and that often they're cherry picked. I mean, are these valid arguments here on either side? Yeah, I, there are valid arguments actually on both. And I think the really interesting thing here is that the shoe was on the other foot for both parties during the Trump impeachments, where you had Republicans railing against private depositions, saying they should be public and that Democrats were going to cherry pick and selectively release transcripts. And Democrats sort of justifying these private interviews. And now they're doing uh, the opposite. On the Republican side of things, they argue that, look, if you do all these interviews in public, witnesses can sort of see what other witnesses say and they can kind of align their 
your story. So a lot of times when you're doing an investigation, you want to initially do that first questionnaire privately before you go publicly. Uh, on the other side, Democrats obviously worried that some of these pieces are going to leak out and they're going to make the Biden White House look bad, look, make Hunter Biden look bad, but also the president look bad. Uh, so they're pushing back on that. So valid reasons on both sides uh, of this debate here. And Rachel, Republicans certainly think that they'll have an upper hand in legal disputes for documents and testimony if they can move forward here. Uh, as Republicans cite obstruction from the Biden administration, which some say has kind of inspired some of these moderate Republicans to support this now when maybe they haven't in the past. Is that accurate? That's right. I mean, I ran into a centrist Republican today uh, on the way to the House floor to vote who told me that, look, I don't support impeaching Joe Biden. I don't think that there is evidence right now uh, to actually link the president to some of the shady things that his son was engaging with with foreign business entities. Uh, however, I am going to be voting for this impeachment inquiry uh, because they want to get evidence. And basically what Republicans are saying, it's twofold. The first thing is that the White House, uh, the Biden administration, has actually made an argument that unless you have a full vote on a House impeachment inquiry, your subpoenas are not valid, uh, that they don't have to listen to them and they don't have to turn over subpoena documents or witnesses to testify because there hasn't been a full House vote as there traditionally is in impeachments. Now, this is an argument that Donald Trump actually made back in 2019 in his first impeachment, uh, Democrats' first impeachment against him, uh, and eventually Democrats back then would actually go on to vote to try to undercut that argument, which is what Republicans Republicans are doing now. The other reason Republicans want to do this is because there's this sort of legal theory out there that once you're in an impeachment, you have the strongest potential hand in a court fight. There is evidence of that if you go back to the Nixon impeachment. Uh, the courts actually ruled very quickly in a matter of weeks and months to uphold the number of subpoenas that Nixon uh, was ignoring from Congress at the time when they were trying to impeach him. So Republicans are sort of banking on that sort of fast-tracking move from the court if they have this vote today. Oh, that's interesting, Rachel. And just quickly, if we can, uh, you know, the House Republicans sort of released what they have, their accusations, uh, at least against him. And they say that there are at least 22 examples of Joe Biden speaking with or meeting with Hunter Biden's foreign business associates. And Rachel, they also cite a credible FBI source relaying some kind of information about an alleged bribe that Joe Biden accepted. Now, these are what they're laying out. These are the accusations. They don't have the evidence, though. That's right, and I think that's what's so interesting about this impeachment. It really underscores uh, how we've seen the bar actually be lowered over time when it comes to impeachment, something that uh, the founders of the country put into the Constitution to be the ultimate check on a president to keep him from becoming a tyrant. During Nixon's uh, impeachment, they already had evidence that the money paid to the burglars who broke into the Watergate building uh, had actually traced back to Nixon's campaign. His inner circle had testified about directions he gave them to sabotage political opponents. During the Clinton impeachments, uh, you know, they had the Ken Starr report, evidence that he had had an affair in the White House with Monica Lewinsky, lied under oath. And during the Trump impeachments, they had the July 25th transcript between uh, President Ukraine President Zelensky and President Trump, where Trump said, do us a favor. Uh, so here, what you're seeing right now, uh, these are all allegations. There's not actually hard evidence. And I think that that uh, really speaks to the sort of basement of the power of impeachment, the weapon of impeachment that Congress has given. And I think it speaks to the fact that we're probably going to see impeachments a lot uh, in the course of the next few years uh, for multiple presidents. It's going to become a, a frequent tool that they use over and over again. All right, that's interesting. And Rachel, I know you'll be watching that. We're, again, we're expecting this House vote here momentarily. Rachel, thank you for being with us. And I want to bring... Uh Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.